Hi, everyone. Uh, it's late in the day. So um, I, I think I'm really excited to share a little bit more about what we do at Samba Nova. So Samba Nova is a hardware company. Uh, we started out by building a number of different hardware uh, tools called an RDU that uh, have advantages over GPUs, over um, all other types of um, hardware applications. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that today, um, but I wanna talk about something that we've released, a platform called Samba One, which is built on top of these, this hardware, um, and that also enables a number of different inference production deployments. Uh, and so that's really gonna be the focus of my talk today. And at the end, actually, I have a few links, so hopefully you all can play around with some of the developer playgrounds and other things that we have available. So, of course, I, I don't need to tell everyone here that generative AI has become uh, very popular these days, uh, but for an enterprise, what does that mean? And so, for an enterprise, of course, they're looking to streamline, accelerate, reduce cost, um, but I think the key thing is they wanna simplify. And in order to do that, you, you want to find a way to get all of your functions working together um, and get them to be more productive. So Samba Nova delivers three things. One is enterprise grade AI. So what we mean by that is high accuracy, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, and full ownership. Those are extremely important. But the third thing that's very important is data. Making sure that the data stays on-prem. And this is obviously something that is difficult for many people to do these days with cloud environments. And many enterprises are really worried that their data is going to be uh, used for, let's say, training the next monolithic model. Uh, and so, uh, of course, that's the next point, trillion parameter models. So, of course, there's a lot of different big models out there, but what does that really mean, right? So, of course, you can have one large monolithic model, but that's not going to help you be modular. It's not going to help you um, identify what your product manager needs versus a finance person versus someone in legal. And so that's, that's one thing that we do. We combine a number of different models together, whether they are large or small, to enable a number of different use cases. And then the last thing is true full stack. So like I said, we're a hardware company. We started that way um, in 2017. And today, we build the entire stack. And in fact, today, I'm, I'm excited because I'm going to be able to share with you a developer platform that you can use on your own. So what does an enterprise have? Of course, they have many different applications, right? So there's product management, there's customer support, marketing, legal, finance. All of these have different use cases. Now, of course, there's some things that are common, right? So they all want to search for content, they want to analyze content, they want to do certain things, um, they want to maybe do certain types of agentic things. Um, and the idea is you have to be able to cover all of these use cases. But let's say that one of those use cases are not working very well. Let's say the product manager is not very happy with the way that their productivity is going. The question is, how do you ensure that the models stay as relevant, they're still working just as well for all the other functions, but you can update just the part for the product manager? And so that's really what the idea is. You want breadth, but you also want depth for each one of these different functions. And so, just in summary, enterprise grade means a few things. One is you want security. You want it to be affordable. So these days, a lot of the tools out there are very expensive. Um, if you start to add up all the costs to you know, different monolithic models, different APIs, uh, it's very difficult. So in production, you want to think about how many users am I gonna have? How, you know, is that gonna be, are they gonna 10X, are they gonna 1,000X? How many calls am I gonna make? These are the sorts of things that you have to think about when you're actually deploying in a, in a large enterprise, let's say 50,000, 100,000 person company. Um, you want it to be accurate, of course, so that goes without saying. Broad applicability, but the last two are very important. Manageability and open. So manageability means, of course, I can change the models, I can pull them out, put new ones in, and I want it to be open. I don't want to have vendor lock-in. And so that's really key for enterprise-grade deployments. So I want to talk a little bit about a few things. So, you know, of course, today a lot of fun things happened. You know, there's another, another, you know, many announcements that were made. Uh, Llama 3 came out. Uh, lots of fun things have happened, right? And, and of course, there's large monolithic models that we're, we're all familiar with. Um, you know, of course, GPT, Claude, and others. So I want to talk a little bit about what is the difference between large monolithic models small expert models, which is what we've been doing for many, many years in machine learning, um, and we've been training and fine-tuning models for a long time. Uh, and then what are we offering at Samba 1? So in large monolithic models, we know a few things. So one is that your data goes somewhere, and 
it can be used for many different things. Uh, so security is can be there, but it's not clear. Second is cost effectiveness. Of course, if you start to just scale this out, right? Like I said, 10,000, 100,000, million, you start to add up the cost and you start to wonder, is this really the most efficient way to do these types of things? For example, if I'm doing you know, completion of, of code um, or if I'm trying to do you know, completion of emails, uh, things that everybody would probably use. Um, so those are things you need to think about. Then accuracy and broadly applicable. We know that, of course, they are very good on certain benchmarks. We know that they work very well. Um, so certainly that's great. Manageability, you only have one model. So yes, that is really awesome. But it's not open. And so I want to talk next about the small models. So with small models, on Hugging Face today, you can get thousands, tens of thousands. I don't know the exact count, but I'm sure if you go today, you'll figure it out. Um, they may or may not be secure, right? Depends on, first of all, their licenses. First of all, you need to see kind of, you know, each, each, each model might have a different way of working, right? Where you deploy it matters. So security is not guaranteed. Um, cost effectiveness at production scale, again, if you're launching a lot of different models, that may or may not be the case. Accuracy, you can get really good models. Today on Hugging Face, you'll actually find that a lot of models are benchmarked against GPT-4 or Claude, and you actually find that they work a lot better on certain benchmarks. Broadly applicable, of course, a single model won't be. Manageable, you have hundreds, thousands of models. That's going to be tough, but they are open, so that's good. So what is the point of Samba 1? So in Samba 1, we say we want to bring all of this together. So on one end, we want security. So you need to have that full stack, put everything on-prem, make sure everybody can keep their data within their own uh, bounds. The second is cost effectiveness. Am I gonna, if I'm going to call a bunch of GPUs, for example, and I have 100 models, and they each need to be run on a single GPU, and I haven't really optimized that, then that's going to be really tough. But in Samba 1, what we do is we actually hot cache them and put them all onto single nodes, and that enables us to run lots of different models side by side at a very, at one tenth the cost. In fact, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, and, and actually, hopefully, you can also try it out yourself. Third is accuracy. So, like I said before, large models are quite accurate. Small models can be even more accurate. And so the question is, how do you mix them together? And so with our system, you can actually put them side by side. You can put a 400 billion parameter model right next to a 7 billion parameter model. And then manageability. Of course, it is difficult. You still have a lot of models. But that's what we try to make easy for our customers. We try to make that easy through our UI, through our UX, enabling them to take out models as they need, put them in as they need. And then open. We focus on the models that are open, that are available, and that people can build upon without worry that you know, there might be license issues or anything of that sort. So in summary, really what we try to do is we try to combine both of these, the large models, the small models, and we try to find what's the best we can do on our new chip, which is called SN40L. So what we call is, this is a composition of experts. Now, the term experts you know, can mean a lot of things. In this case, what we mean is the models, right? So any model that's good at, let's say, legal, or let's say really good at doing Q&A for, um, for medical images, um, each of these are going to be an expert in a particular domain. And you might even have certain models that are experts in multiple domains. There are certain models these days that are mixtures of experts. And so you find that actually those experts or those models, although trained jointly all at once, they represent an expertise in multiple benchmarks. So whatever the case might be, you want to be able to put all of these side by side so that when you want the product manager or the legal person um, wants to actually call this, they, they can call this all from one place. So a monolithic model really is what we know today, right? Our trillion parameter monolithic model is going to be something that is large. It's going to be tough to run on a GPU. Even if you do, like we mentioned, it's going to be hard to ensure that it's good on every single thing. And even if it's good at one particular task, you might need to update it later. Uh, and when you update it, how do you ensure that it doesn't hallucinate or lose some of that previous context? So that's where this, our, our system comes into play. In our case, we identify the right expert as needed. And what we do is then we load all these experts onto the RDU. And when needed, you kind of pull the right one. And which is the real goal here is to, one, be able to take anything from open source. So we know that every single day there's something new. 
Um, and that's what's fun about what's happening in machine learning today. Um, so if I'm an enterprise, I want to leverage the latest and greatest. But the second thing is I also want to fine tune it and make it better on my data. And that's the second point, which is if you can do this inference 10x faster, that's great. But can you also do training? And so although we won't talk too much about training today because this is a pro production and deployment um, session, uh, you can also do that on, on our chips. So Samba One is all about providing a platform for this composition of experts. And what I wanted to talk a little bit more about was what are some applications that you can enable from this. So like I mentioned, this is enabling us to take any expert models and pull them from open source, get them onto our chip, ensure the highest accuracy by choosing the right expert for the right job, and then running this 10x faster than similar systems. And so currently we have a number of capabilities. Right now, the ones that you'll see online are our LLM capabilities, which span chat, SQL, code, a number of different uh, domains, including finance, product, others. Um, and so definitely would encourage you to, to try out some of these things. And so I'll have a link at the end. So why do we say 1.3 trillion parameters? So what, we're, what we mean by that is that we're putting together a number of different models together that add up to 1.3 trillion parameters. And so whether that's a Llama model, a Mistral model, a Gemma model, Falcon model, you can run all of them side by side. And when you choose the right one for the job, in fact, you can find that they uh, perform much better too. So what I wanted to do was chat a little bit more about enterprise grade AI benchmarks. So we all know that there's a lot of benchmarks out there. There's Alpaca Eval, there's a number of others, um, Open LLM Leaderboard. Um, and so what we did actually is we took a bunch of benchmarks, we collated them into different domains. And so we have things like information extraction, text to SQL, function calling, a number of others, text editing, and then we also used some, some standard ones like Open LLM Leaderboard. Uh, and what the goal here was to say, let's take the expert models that are best at that particular task or that range of task and compare how those perform against some well-known monolithic models like GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 Turbo. 3 .5 turbo. Uh, and uh, of course, what we found is that indeed there are cases where it doesn't perform the best, uh, but these are of course out of the box. Uh, and then there's many cases where it actually performs quite, quite well. So the idea is, if I'm an enterprise, I want to understand which one of these applications I really care about. For that, I want to run a certain subset of those models. Uh, and then when I actually bring that onto my prem, right, so I actually, let's say I buy a Samba One system, or let's say I want to start my AI journey, then what I'm gonna do is think about what models and applications I have, and then start to gather data and then over time fine tune. And so the idea is that light green line would increase over time as you fine tune. These are all out of the box numbers. And so from Samba One, we enable a number of different applications. So we have something called Samba Studio, we have something called Samba Verse, which I'll go, go to in the next slide, um, and then a number of Samba apps that we've developed. And so really the key is one platform can enable many different apps. And as an enterprise, I want to enable as many apps as possible because I know that it's not just gonna be the product person or the legal person or the finance person. I'm gonna need different app for different applications. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Sambaverse and definitely encourage you to go to, this, uh, go to this URL. Really the goal of this application was to enable developers to try out a number of different models all at once. So if you wanna compare different LLMs, whether they're 7B, whether they're 170B, you wanna try different, different ones side by side and identify whether they, uh, whether they respond well or whether they don't respond well. And that's really the point of this. So you can compare between two to six different models. Um, you can actually use them as APIs as well if you'd like. Uh, and so if you click in, you can also find where, where you'll, you'll find your curl request and you can go ahead and try that out. But really the idea here is breadth. You have a lot of different models that are all running on the single node. And those nodes enable you to run lots of different models all in one place. 
Uh, and then from a total cost of ownership perspective, this is much cheaper than any other similar architecture. And then the second thing I wanted to talk about, you know, we are a hardware company, so I figured that this would be a good, uh, good thing to talk about, was an application that really talks about speed, right? So when we talk about um, speed in chat, we also want to see fast responses. And so in this case, we have a very limited application. We, this is not like an enterprise grade system. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to show that if I'm a customer and I want to enable, let's say, a customer chat, or I want to enable um, some way to you know, interact with everyone. So in this case, this is actually nine multilingual experts, as well as five other open source models that, that, uh, that perform really well on uh, a host of those enterprise grade AI benchmarks. And then we included a routing model. So when you actually run the chat, the chat then routes to the right model as needed. And the idea here is that you'll also get you know, a response for how long the response took and how many tokens per second you get. And the real point here is quick response time and ability to chat in multiple languages. And so that's really the purpose of this particular app. All of this is enabled on the Samba One platform. Yeah, so I'll stop here and thank you so much.